Hi, this video is to give you a run through of the formatized pest control solution. And we're going to spend about half an hour just looking at the different components of the system and how it's set up to be working beautifully for a pest control business, whether you're a sole trader with, with one person or right through to larger businesses. The page that we're looking at now is the home dashboard. And from this page, you can very quickly jump into the different sections of formatize and, and the way that you're gonna run the business. Now, it's important to remember that you don't need to use all of the components that I'm going to show you today. If you just want to use the reports and use other systems for your scheduling and your jobs and your management, that's absolutely fine. If you're going to use this for your jobs and your management, that's fine as well and, and use your CRM for something else. But so much of it comes included and it all works together. So there's huge advantages in time saving by using the whole system, but the choice is yours. Okay, from this page, you can look at the different modules. You can also very quickly add a new contact, a new lead, a new quote, a new invoice, job, task, or note with one click. You can also send an email, an SMS, or a letter straight from this page using the templates that are included. If you're needing to search, you got a client on the phone and you need to find a job number or a task, then they're all searchable from the search tab on the dashboard. Now, one thing also I wanna point out right at the start is on most of the pages throughout the system, on the right hand side, you can see a video icon and that gives you a walkthrough on how the page that you're looking at works. And we're adding more and more of these all the time. So you can just click on that video icon and up comes a video on how the page that you're looking at works. Okay, so that's the dashboard. On the left hand side is, is a timeline. So all of the recent activities that have happened in the business are all there and, and many of those items will be clickable. So you can be taken straight to the email or the SMS or the invoice that that timeline event relates to. And then underneath, if you've got specific tasks that have been assigned to you, they'll be there ready to manage from that section, the task management section. All right, now a huge part of uh, pest control is the forms and the reports. So I wanna jump in and have a look at that first. I've gone to forms and then uh, this is the forms dashboard. The other way I can find this page is to go to forms in the top menu and then select the dashboard from the top. This page gives you a really good summary of all the report activity, everything that's going on with your reports that have been submitted. You can add new reports and templates. You can look at your existing templates, start a new form, view your saved forms. Saved forms are ones that you've started but haven't yet submitted. All of your submitted forms and then there's reporting, lookup databases and photos which we'll come back to. Uh, another time. So this also shows you the submissions of the forms as they're being submitted, tells you what they are, where they were done, who submitted it. You've got tracking of all of the automated emails on the right hand side. Underneath that, uh, some users information, recent activity, and then underneath, as your technicians are taking photos in the field, these will be coming through as a live stream and uh, automatically tagged and recorded against the uh, report that they're taken in. So I, I can click on that and view the form that that photo was taken in. Okay, so that's the dashboard. Now, when we want to have a look at the reports that we've got or add new templates, the buttons are on the left-hand side. If I hit add new template, here are my choices. I can use the form bank, and that's a, a whole range of templates that we've provided that you can use. You can use the form builder or you can upload your own form and our former times team will build it for you. But we've got all of the pest reports built already. So let's jump into the form bank. Now here you can see we've got form categories at the top. And so we've got a whole range of templates ready for you to use in your business. And they cover things like job management, health and safety. You can see in the health and safety category, there's things like site safety checklists, return to work plans, incident reports, pre-start checks, vehicle checklists, that sort of thing. So they're all available for you to use. Um, they're general business type uh, forms, but they're all available and ready for you to use. Underneath the panel, we have the pest control section. And here we've got the different uh, pest reports that are available. And I'm going to focus today on the formatized specialist reports. These are our own suite of um, approved reports. And you can see that there's a full suite of them. So we've got things like timber pest inspection reports, pre-purchased timber pest reports, all of the agreements, um, 
pre-purchase timber pest termite inspection agreements all available. We've also got things like commercial pest control agreements. So if you want to set up an agreement with your clients, then we have those available. And we've built these as what we call web forms. So there's no more having to email the PDF to your client, they print it, sign it, scan it, and send it back to you. These are all available as web forms so that you can literally send a link to a client, they open it, sign on their screen, submit it, they get a copy of the PDF and so do you instantly. So we'll have a quick look at that as well. So let's have a look at an example. I'll just grab that pre-purchase timber pest so you can see what our reports look like and I'll take you through the elements of it. Now we spent a lot of time building these reports and there were four main focuses that we concentrated on to get these as good as possible uh, in the whole world of reports. In our opinion, existing reports that were out there were very uh, insurance looking, lots of words. The end client really couldn't tell what the inspector was saying versus what was just legal terminology in the report. It was very difficult for them to understand uh, the different components of the report and what it meant to them. So the way we've built these reports is that, it, of course, they have to be compliant to Australian standards. We've also been uh, taken all of the AITMA code of best practice into account. We've also aimed to make it uh, available to and user friendly for the actual inspectors in the field, of course. We want it to be compliant for all insurers, no matter who you're using. And most important, at the end of all of that, we want to make it readable for the end customer so they can look at your report and understand what you're telling them. Okay, let's have a run through it. The, the first page is the cover and the, the picture at the top is the photo that you'll take of the front of the property or, or another area of the property that you want to have on the front cover. It will automatically bring in your logo and your colors. So where we've got your logo there, that will be your logo and the blue that you see here will be your, your primary color. It brings in the appropriate Australian standard and then the address of the property. I'm just gonna scroll through this PDF fairly slowly now so that you can have a look at it and see what it's, what it's including. Again, this blue of the main banner will be in your color. And then we go into the contents page. Now we've got a, a content section at the front which um, covers things like client details, about our agreement, the report summary, about the property inspected, the uh, different areas of the report, including all the conducive conditions. And then finally at the end, things like the terms and conditions, the inspector details and the client acknowledgement. Now we've color coded this report so that every section has its own color, the first one being the client details. Again, all making it as readable and as accessible to the end customer as possible. So when we go now to that green section, the client details, there they are. You can see all of the client details coming in, the inspection date and time, people that were present, the weather conditions at the time. And you can see that uh, where we've got elements that have been entered by the inspector, they're in black. If there's other generic comments that are coming from the report itself, then they're in gray. Move through that now. At the bottom of every page, you've got the identity, the version number, the date and time of submission, so that it's uniquely identified as a document. Next section is about our agreement inspection requested agreement details, inspection provider details. And then we've got the inspection summary page. Now this page is pretty cool as well. It, this page itself is automatically updated based on the sections of the report as you're filling them in. So you don't actually uh, complete this page. It's automatically built as you're doing the report. But you can see we've used color coded buttons, green and red to define yes or no, good or bad for the three different sections. And the three different sections are access, activity, safety, and risk. So we'll go through those different sections of the report now and see how these colored panels are being uh, automatically generated. All right, about the property inspected. Again, that brings in a photo of the front of the property. It has all of the standard requirements here, and these are all drop downs. So detached house, height of structure, wall construction are all drop downs that are available in the list already that you can also add to manually. So you can build that list yourself. Furnish property information, areas we were unable to inspect and why. You can see the supporting photos with comments, restricted access areas, 
high risk areas. Move through the report. Then we're into the findings and observations. So here you've got active termites, termite nests, termite damage or workings, subterranean termite treatments, evidence of previous treatments, information about durable notices, and then the other components, wood borers, fungal decay, frequency of inspections. And then the final uh, susceptibility of the property to timber pests, moderate, all of that information is then reflected back up in that summary page that we showed you at the top. Conducive conditions, water leaks, water tanks, high moisture readings, and so on. Okay, so that is the bulk of the report. Then you move through to the supporting photos. Then you've got all of the terms and conditions that are there to protect you. And then finally at the bottom, you've got the sign-offs from both the inspector and there it is there, contact the inspector with signature and the client acknowledgement of the report. So that is the pre-purchase timber pest and all of our other reports follow a, a similar format. Uh, if we want to have a look at the, I'll just show you the web form agreement while we're here. So we'll go to view form templates and the agreement, there it is at the top. And I'll just show you what this looks like and how this works. This shows all of the details of the agreement. And again, you're able to edit these, the reports, and this is a huge positive for uh, guys that know what they're doing. Um, all of the reports are completely editable. So if you want to add additional elements or change them around or move fields, all of that is available in the form builder. And all of our reports have been built using the form builder. So it means if you make changes in these forms, they will be reflected in the final report as well. But let's have a look at this. Uh, hit preview here and this will show you the web form agreement so it will be with your logo at the top and your color here in this main band in the menu bar the customer can either click through the menu to see the different components or they can scroll down the page as you normally would fill in their details sign on screen whether it be on their mobile phone or the device or the desktop like this and then if they want a copy of the PDF themselves, they can click yes, put their email address in. If they want to make payment, that's also possible. And then they can view the, the agreement. So it's as simple as that. They scroll through the terms and conditions, get to the bottom, hit submit. As soon as they've done that, they get a copy of the, of the uh, agreement and you get a, a copy of it instantly as well with a notification that it's been signed and returned. So that's what the uh, web forms do. And you, like I said, you can use exactly the same tool for your agreements with your uh, corporate clients as well, if you want them to be signing up to term agreements with you. All right, so that's the form and the form templates. And as I said, there's uh, all of the pest reports available in our suite. If I go back to the form bank, all of those reports in our suite, and then you've got all of the general business reports as well. Okay, so termite inspection reports, existing structure certificates of installation. There's even the QBCC form 16, so they, they are all done. And when they generate, they look exactly like the, the original uh, document, timber pest agreements. And then at the bottom, you've got your general pest treatments and proposal reports. Okay, so a complete set of pest control reports, all available and included. All right, so that's the forms and the report side of things. Next, I wanna go across and look at jobs because now that we've got the forms, we wanna be able to dispatch these forms to our inspectors with the right forms attached. So our system comes with a complete job management system and you can create view, sorry, view all of your jobs here. So this shows all of the current jobs that are out there. I can look at active jobs. If you look at the menu at the top, my recurring jobs, so they're uh, jobs that you're repeating and doing on a recurring basis, all of my completed jobs. I can look at my job templates, which is an important thing that I'm gonna come back to soon. And then I can also look at any deleted jobs. So here I've got very good visibility of all the jobs that are currently in motion. On the far right hand side, there's a view in scheduler. So I can click on that and that will let me see that particular job in the scheduler. 
I'm going to click on create new job. So I'm hitting the red button that says new job at the top. And this brings me into the new job page. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is show you how quick it is to create a job if you've got the system set up properly. All right. And I can create and dispatch a job to a user within 20 seconds. All right. Time starts now. I'm going to select my client. I can either select an existing client or I can enter a new one. Then I'm going to select the job type and I'm going to go for pre-purchase property inspection because that's what we just looked at. And I'm going to assign it to only the people that are available to do these. Blake, I'm going to hit dispatch. Job done. Now that was less than 20 seconds and I've created a job, assigned it and dispatched it to the user. When I've done that, they will receive a ping notification on their phone that they've got a new job and that job will be sitting in their jobs list ready to be done at the right time. Okay, I'll, I just want to go back and have a look at what was done with that in those 20 seconds because it all looked very simple, but actually a huge amount of automation just happened. So you can see the new job has been added to my jobs list and now I want to go in and edit it and have a look at it. So although it only took, I don't know, what was it, 10 seconds? Let's have a look what was actually done then. So as soon as I selected the company from my list of clients, the contact name was automatically populated and the location was automatically populated and so was the site name. Now, if the client has multiple locations, for example, if a real estate agent has 50 different properties that you're working with them on, then all of those locations can be stored against that client and they'll be available in that dropdown. You can also add new locations from the page as well. Every location can then be subdivided into zones. So this property has a front entry, a main office and a warehouse. So if I can be more specific about the job and say that it's actually with regard to the bait stations, for example, in the front entry. The next thing I did was select the um, job type and I selected the pre-purchased timber pest from my list of services. And you can see all of my services are available here to select from that list. And this is what we call job type templates. And the benefit is that it makes everything so much faster if you're using them. You don't have to, you can simply use the forms or you can just use this as a, as a job scheduling system and not link at all. But I'm showing you the benefits of linking everything here so that it's all in one place. All right, now by doing that, it automatically added the job title. It automatically added a note. It also um, automatically added the right reports. So if I go across the top tabs here, I can see uh, the forms that have been attached. It's automatically put in the pre-purchase timber pest inspection to be done. I can then add attachments if I want to. I can track all of the automated communications that are going to trigger for this job and I can track the job history. So at the moment, only one thing's been done so far, the creation of the job. I can also add attachments like floor plans or agreements. And I can set up, as I said, if it's a recurring job, this is where you would do that. I want to create it to occur every three months, for example. Okay, or until the job's completed. And then it shows you when the next three jobs will be done and the next appointment date. But back to the job details. The other thing that it did was automatically create an invoice for this job. So I didn't do that. I just selected the billing name and the job type and all of this other element has elements have automatically been created. If I open that invoice, I can see that all of the right contact details have been, the dates automatically set, all of the invoice numbering is done. It has even brought in the line item for that particular job type, pre-purchase inspection and report. and a default price which I can override on a job by job basis. So that invoice is automatically created. I can add attachments to the invoice if I want to, and it will then also track all of the communications, either reminders or the emails and SMSs that are being sent with regard to this invoice. So chasing of the outstanding invoice. All of that is available within the invoice section. Okay, um, down the bottom, I can then track notes about the invoice, payment details, the history of the invoice, all on the one page. So that was all done instantly when I created this job. And on the right hand side uh, are the company details. So it's pulled all of the information in. When I selected Frank Jones on, in the billing name, it's pulled all of the company details in. So I can very quickly see 
uh, all of their details, how much we've invoiced them, how much is currently outstanding, the type of customer they are. I can SMS call or email the client straight from this page. I can view all of their existing locations and add new ones. And I can edit the contact details from this page as well. Okay, so as you can see, a lot was done with simply just a couple of clicks. And the reason that I was able to do that is largely because of the job type templates that we have built that are ready to be used. So let's go and take a look at those and we'll see what's actually included. I'm gonna to go to jobs in the top menu and then select job type templates. Okay, so here's all the templates that are included and you can see that there's a lot. And again, you don't need to use them. You would only use the ones that you want to and you can also add your own and you can edit what's here to make it perfect for you. But I'm just going to grab an example. We may as well stick with the pre-purchase, so I'll just search for that. Okay, there it is. Let's go and have a look at what, what I mean by a job type template. And again, remember, if you're not sure how all of this works, I can just click on that video in the top right-hand corner, and there's a video on job type templates and how to set them up. Okay, so you can see this job type template has one, two, three, four, five different steps across the top. The first one is the job details. And here you've got the job type, the title, the description that you want to use, the color that you want it to appear in the scheduler, the expected duration of the job, the priority that it has. You can enter the job forms then. So every time I create this job, it will automatically include the pre-purchase timber pest inspection report. I can also attach safety forms to jobs. So if you're doing specific jobs that have a specific related safety form, then you can attach the safety form here and then set the rule. So that in this case, safety forms must be completed before accessing the job forms. So from a business manager or owner point of view, you know that every time this job is being done, the appropriate safety form is being completed before the job forms being started. And that's just a huge benefit to you from a compliance perspective. Uh, the safety requirements are just going to get more and more demanding as time goes on. So it's nice to know that you've got that available. Whether you use it or not is up to you. I'm just letting you know that it's there. And the safety forms might vary dramatically from a really simple PPE check right through to a full swim uh, risk assessment on a site or at height safety report. And then finally, you can determine who's allowed to uh, complete this job. So you can set up your users into different user groups, and then you can assign who's actually able to complete this. So if they're a general pest um, technician and they don't have the, the inspection uh, qualifications, then they wouldn't be allowed to do this job. Okay, so that's the first one. That's the job details. The next one is what we call job status updates. And these are all about communicating with the client and with your own team as the job moves through its different stages. And you can see the stages are when it's created, when it's assigned to a technician, when it's accepted, when it becomes complete or becomes overdue. So you, you are able to send an email, an SMS, a letter, or create a task within the system whenever the job moves through or hits any of these different stages. And you can see in this example, we've got one, two, three different automated job status updates triggering as the job moves through its different stages. And this is the third one. So you've got one, two, three. The third one is I want to send an email when the job is complete. Here's the information. And then you can customize the wording of that update to bring in what we call placeholders so that it's personalizing the communications with the client. So this is thank you for booking a job type. In this case, it would put pre-purchase inspection with your company name. It then confirms all of the details and then it brings in contact details at the bottom. Now, the way that you bring in these placeholders, I'll just click on the end of the first sentence, is hit control space. And there's a the hint at the bottom, press control plus space to view all of your placeholder options. So you simply hit control space and that opens up all of the placeholders for uh, the contact, all of the job details, all of the sender's details, the primary contact details, the billing details, and all of your business details. So they're all available just to click to add into the wording of these communications. 
Again, please remember, you don't have to use these, but they're all there and available to you. So this is what we call our Smart Assist program. You can see the heading at the top. And we're rolling that out constantly throughout the system. Areas that we think we can help the business run smarter by automating elements of the day-to-day -day mundane tasks so that you can concentrate on the important parts in growing the business. So again, job status updates, communicating with the customer and with your own team as the single job moves through its different stages. Okay, the next one is what we call future reminders. And this is all about making sure that you win the next appointment, that there's no confusion, it's being communicated, everyone knows what's going on, and you're rebooking all of your future inspections and, and uh, best work. Again, part of our Smart Assist program, scheduling assistant. Here, it works exactly the same way. In this case, we've got two different notifications. One is going out one day before the job due date. The other one is going out one month after the job is completed. So examples are that you might send a, a letter out 30 days before an annual inspection. You might follow that up seven days before the job is due with an email, and then you'll follow it up the, the day before with an SMS. Okay, so you can structure those to be timed. Email, SMS, letter or task, X number of hours, days or months, either before the due date or after the job has been completed. And in the same way, you can customize all elements of that using the placeholder content. Okay, so that they're available. Uh, obviously, you can customize everything. Everything that's here, you can customize, change wording around, do it the way that you want it to do and present the way that you want to present it. Line items, this is the second last part. This is where if you want an invoice to automatically create when this job is created, then this is where you set this up. And um, it's just another way of automation. This is our accounts assistant. So I want, every time I want this job is created, I want it to automatically create an invoice at the same time. It won't send the invoice, it will simply create it ready to be sent, checked and sent. So all of your line items will be available here to select from. You can put in a, a specific description that's related to the job that type that you're setting up. You can put in a, a default unit price, which can then be overridden on a job by job basis. And then you can assign it to the account code that you want it to with the appropriate tax rates. So all of that work will automatically trigger whenever this job is done as an automated invoice. And then if it is a recurring job, a job that you're going to do on a weekly, monthly, quarterly, annual basis, whatever it might be, then you simply check the box and set it up. So we want to do this every every fortnight or every three months, every three months. And the, the recurring profile will end either after a certain number of jobs have been done at the end of your contract period, or it, they can just continue to create forever. Down the bottom, it's got create X number of days before the job. So this is just to stop your... Uh, app diary getting clogged with future jobs um, it will set it as a placeholder so it's very clear that it's the time is being taken up but it won't actually create the physical job until in this case three days before the job is due okay so a little bit of work as you can see to set up and customize those job types but once you've done them the whole system just works and there's so much automation and value that comes from these job types You'll get more and more value the more that you use them. But it's up to you whether you choose to use them or not. You may want to leave that and do it as a separate stage later on. So that's jobs. All right, so we've looked at forms and the reports that, that go with them. One thing I want to show you with the reports is every single report that comes in, when it's submitted from the app, and I'm going to go down to submitted forms. Uh, different clients use this in different ways. If you think you have absolutely nailed it in the inspection and there's nothing more to do and you've got everything exactly right, then you can send that report instantly to the client from your phone or tablet. In most cases, most of our clients want to review the report first, whether it be them or, or someone in the office to check it, check for spelling mistakes, make any changes that they need to, and then send the PDF to the client. So what I'm doing here is I've gone to forms and then to submitted forms. And that's given me a list of every single form that has come in from the mobile devices or from the desktop. You can complete reports here in the desktop in the same way. 
Now I can look at this report and every element of it. I can either jump using the quick navigation menu on the, on the left hand side to just look at an individual section or I can scroll from top to bottom to check the entire report. So I'll just go back to the top. Here I can go through and see every single field of information that's in the report. I can change and correct spelling mistakes if I want to from here. There's all the different types of buildings I can select to change, edit, update, add additional fields here in the box underneath that will add it to the dropdown. Okay, I can see all of the pictures. I can check that the document's been signed. If everything's okay, then I can save it. I can view the PDF. I can track the history of all of the changes that have been made and by who. I can look at the original details and I can go back to that navigational button. All right, but normally you view the PDF and then you can either send the PDF from the system here or you can download it and send it from your own mail account. Okay, but that's how you would create a report using the website and also how you edit a report using the website to finally send the copy to the client. Okay, now let's jump to the CRM. So the CRM really, and I'll go back to the dashboard just to show how all this fits together. We've looked at um, most of the elements now, but I wanna go in and have a look at the contacts page of the CRM. So all of your client information is recorded here in one place. I'm gonna to go to that Frank Jones one that we looked at when we set the account up. And on this page, I've got everything that I need to see about this client. On the left-hand side is what we call the contact section. So here we've got things like their billing details, their shipping details, if that's relevant, different people at the client and different locations. So again, like I mentioned, uh, if it, the client is a real estate agent, you may have 50 or 100 properties under this locations tab. And the benefit of that is that you can record individual notes and you can add attachments for each individual location and they'll be available to the technician on site. So things like where to find the keys, a floor plan, a site plan of the property are all available and stored against that location um, so that it's always there and available. And then as we also talked about earlier, you can split that location into zones. And this is becomes more powerful when you're using our asset system for things like bait stations. Um, you can create and assign jobs to individual locations and zones within those locations. Okay, and again, this is all editable. You can see a little blue edit pencil so that you can add additional fields both to the billing details page you might want to add extra details like the type of property or um, the client's birthday. You, it comes with all of these standard fields that you need for your business, but you are able to add additional custom fields as well by uh, using that edit. That's the communication, sorry, that's the contacts panel. Then on the right hand side, we've got the communications panel, and this is tracking and recording all of the different communications that you're having with your client. So first of all, we've got tasks, then we've got any notes that have been added. I can send an email, an SMS, or a letter straight from here. It will bring in all of their details and I can select from my different templates for emailing or SMSing. I can record call notes. So if I want to call a client, I ring them up, I hit start call. I can record all of the notes from that call down the bottom. When I'm finished, I can end the call and then continue entering my notes. And then I can either save and task. And if I create a task, it will pull the call notes in to that task and I can assign it to somebody or I can just save and close it. So all of my calls and then with that comes the call history where it's tracking all the calls made and their duration and any notes that went with it. And then finally, you've got the history of everything that's going on with that client. So I can check emails that have been sent, invoices that have been made, um, every single element that's happened with that client is available within that. Okay, so that's the communication panel. So contacts on the left, communication at the top, and then finally at the bottom, we've got all of the activity. And the big benefit here is I can see everything that's going on with this customer. All the jobs that have been done or are being done, you can see the different statuses going across the page. So I can look at all of the recurring jobs that are set up for that customer, any that are currently overdue, and all of the completed jobs. 
I can look at all of the forms and reports that have been done for this customer. And so everything is stored here. I can very quickly view it, edit, download the PDF, see when they were done. I can set up automated reminders. I can upload documents like um, agreements, the customer agreements that I have. Photos, every single report that includes photos for this customer will all be stored in the photos section. I can create new leads, sales opportunities, quotes, invoices, purchases, and then finally assets. Under the assets tab, sorry, I'll just scroll down to the assets. I can separate assets by asset types, and I won't go into too much detail about this today, but you've got the different types of uh, assets and all of their current statuses uh, separated underneath. So that's the asset section. Along with all of the other elements, I can very quickly and easily access every communication, every activity that's going on with the customer. Very quickly with invoices, if I go to invoices, I can see all of the invoices for this customer and their current status. I can create a new invoice with just one click. There's all of the information pre-populated and ready to go. You can see all of the different locations for the client will be available. So when I create an invoice for this customer, it will invoice the billing address, but will then bring in the relevant location that the invoice relates to. All of my line items are available to select. And I can very quickly build an invoice straight from the CRM page. If you're using a uh, accounting software, especially Xero, then there's a full integration with Xero so that whenever I create an invoice in Formatize, it updates in Xero or, and vice versa. The two systems are syncing every 15 seconds. You can see here, if you are connected to Xero, you can also create a customer invoice directly in Xero. If a payment is made uh, in Xero, it will update as paid in Formatize. If it is linked to a job, then that job link will be here. So that will take me straight through to that job. And at any point in time, I can view a PDF of the, of the uh, invoice and again, email it to the client from there as well. Okay, so I appreciate I've gone through this really quickly, but that, that is the contact section of the CRM. You've also got the sales pipeline where you can track uh, sales leads and inquiries. The job system that we looked at, there's a task system to manage your internal tasks within the business, then your accounts section, and then the scheduler. So let's just have a quick look at the scheduler. If I go back to the jobs page, and this is where I list all of my jobs. And from there, I want to view a job in the scheduler. I can just click the scheduler button at the end. That will take me into the scheduler. And now I'll be able to see all of my jobs and where they're up to in the format of a, of a diary or calendar. It highlights the, the job that we clicked on. But here I can see my different users down the left hand side. And you can separate your users into different user groups. So general pest, termite, etc. I can see the jobs and where they're up to. If I roll over, I get more detail. And there's a number of different things you can see from the job. The red indicates the job status. The color of that corner in the blue uh, is the type of job, the job type. And if I can't remember, I can go down to the bottom and see what the different color codes represent and what the different job statuses represent. And again, you can edit those colors. If you don't want your overdue to be red, you can change the color by simply updating it there. Um, in scheduler mode, uh, and here it is here, you've got map mode, hybrid mode, which is half map and half um, uh, calendar, scheduler mode, and then the list mode that we were looking at earlier. So to create a new job in the scheduler, and it's much easier to do it from here because I can see the availability of my different texts, I just grab and release. And when I release that, it takes me into the job page that we looked at earlier. And now I can see all of the details for that job. It's automatically assigned it to Blake based on the uh, scheduler line. It's automatically set the dates and times based on when I dragged and released. And so now all I need to do is select the client, select the job type, and the rest is done. Okay, so it really is that simple to create a job once you've got the process set up properly. On that basis, I can look at the recurring profile. I can see the forms that have been added. I can add additional attachments. I can track all of the communications, the job status updates and the future reminders, and I can follow the history of the job straight from there. Okay, that's essentially it. The only other thing that I wanted to quickly show you in this overview is the resources section. So the resources is 
the a, a library of documents and it basically replaces the folder that you would carry around in the truck with all of your documents in it in this case we've set up a range of folders your safety data sheets and within each folder you can create subfolders so you can see we've done that as well so you've got the sds as the folder the subfolders and then within those you can upload documents and when you upload those documents you can also track the expiry date of them so if they do have an expiry date you can enter that when you upload it and it will track and maintain those and notify you when they are approaching expiry orange or when they have expired red and you can filter based on those at the top so it's really useful for SDSs, but lots of other things as well. We, you can upload it for things like um, operating manuals, company handbook, pricing schedules, rego documents, insurance certificates, uh, anything that you have to store that you need to be available. And ideally, if, if you need it to help track with expiry, then that's there to help you as well. So that's a full suite of documents available and included. You can add and, and remove your own documents there as well. When you update it here in the management portal, it syncs to all of the mobile devices. So the guys in the field have got copies of only the latest versions with them at all times. So that's what we call the document resource management available at the top. Thank you very much for your time. That's a, 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 a really quick overview of how the system works. One thing I wanna show you just before we go is the settings page. So I'm gonna go right across to the right hand side and click on the settings icon. And this is the settings page for the whole system, basically. At the top, you've got your general account settings. And underneath that, you've got your module settings, things like contacts, accounts, jobs, pipeline, and so on. The easiest way to find what you're looking for is to type in a keyword. So if I'm looking for invoices, then I can just start typing invoices and it will show you the different settings related to invoices. Here in company profile, you've got formatize invoices. That's our invoices to you. So you've got a record of all of those. Under the smart assist, we've got our uh, accounts assistant, and that's where our system will automatically chase your outstanding invoices for you. But what you're actually looking for is under accounts, and here's your invoice settings. So that's where you go to set up your invoices. Okay, so that's one way to do it, enter the keyword. The other way is to hit the expand all button. And that shows you all the categories within each different section. And what you'll need to do when you're first getting started is company details. You need to update those and make sure that they're all correct. You can upload your logo and set the color of the app and the portal through that logo and color section. Like I said earlier, all of our invoices, the formatized invoices for you will be stored in the formatized invoice section. And when you're activating the account or updating your card details, you do that through the payment details section here in the company profile. Other things to be aware of, you can add and create your user groups under the user sections. So that's where you'd have admin, uh, general pests, termite inspectors as different user groups so that you can control those jobs and permissions. And then over in the email and S SMS section, this is where you, um, enter your email details. It's where you set up the SMS account. So everything that I've shown you uh, is essentially included. We don't, you do have to pay extra for SMSs because it uses our templates uh, through the system. So we charge 10 cents a text and you can go in there and set up that account. It also has an automatic re-topper when it hits certain balances. So it's managed for you and you never, uh, the system's always working. So there we are, email footers, um, all of your email bounce logs are available through there, your different email templates and setting up your SMS account, all available through that section. So that's the settings cog in the top right hand corner. For your own personal um, profile, where you'll have your login details and you can update your passwords, that's under the my profile section on the end tab. Great, well that's it. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. I've covered a lot in a very short period of time, but we wanted to give you a general overview of the system and how it works and how reports link to jobs and how jobs link to the CRM and then how everything is covered off in that contact page within the CRM. Thank you very much for your time.